the life, bruh. <laughs> Guys, is there a point to making like ten sword heroes? Oh my god, I'm dead. Is there a point to making like ten sword heroes? I don't think so. But this guy keeps making sword heroes. If you keep saying Marita's waifu and you make like every other sword hero, what the hell's the point? Anyways, 40 plus 10, 50 HP, 51 attack, 39 speed, 50 defense, 29 res. Guard sword, reposition, Ignis, distant counter, wrath, attack defense, oath, attack defense, bond. I guess that kind of works together. It's not, you know, much of anything, but all right. Yeah, I guess that works together. Guard sword. This is pretty good. Just deny them from getting their specials. It's nice. Um, she has a lot of defense, so this kind of works. But distant counter on 29 res with no damage reduction? What are you doing? I guess this is good against archers, but you know, that's about it. What he exactly said is, I want to want to show you my biggest mistake in my entire fake career. Dude, I could have told you this was a mistake. I've been, like, ever since Ivil got released, I've just been like, what's the point of Ivil? Why did she get released? What, what exactly does she do? Right? Between Astrum and um, Itsuki, there's no point of getting Ivo except for getting Guard Sword and foddering it off. She is the, she should have been demoted. It made no sense. She didn't have the skills. She didn't differentiate herself well enough. And then for some reason, she stayed a five star. I guess she's waifu, but like, three to seven seven six isn't even like a well recognized game in the West. I guess for um, I guess it always changes when it when we come to talk about like, you know, Japanese people. Anyways, yeah, this was a mistake. Why did you do this? This encounter, a huge waste, attack defense form. Should have just stayed with that. Chill attack is fine to keep as well. Wrath. Wrath for Ignis. Man, I don't even know about this. This is so wacky. But yeah, you did make a mistake. This Ivil. I don't know why you bothered. Vic, if you're here right now, list your five star sword heroes that you've maxed out from favorite to least favorite, all right? Because I, I want to know. Because you have. I, I remember seeing Selka, Marita, Larcy, Ira, of course, uh, Marita, Athena. Like, I've seen so many uh, Selka. Uh, I've seen so many of them. <sighs> Color craze. Oh, God. 40 plus 10 Erica. 46 HP, 53 attack, 27 speed, 40 defense, 44 res. Melancholy plus restore plus fire, flood, bomb plus. I'm not so sure about that. I, I honestly think, like, Miracle is always a good pick. But yeah, interesting. Oh shit, he can't be healed. Uh oh. Um, Fortress Defense Res 3, War Wary Fighter 3, Armor March 3, Live to Serve. I think this is really good for something like, you know, um, Tempest Trials, Ether Raids Defense. I think this is this is where you go for it. Uh, but yeah, having Melancholy Plus. The problem with Melancholy Plus is like, you can um, reset their specials, but the problem is like, Erica doesn't move very well, so it's not the best choice there. As for Fortress Defense Res 3, yeah, 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 that's fine. Uh, Wary Fighter 3, yeah. She's one of the best defensive heroes we have in the game, so. Between everything, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. 40, 44, 27, yeah. So yeah, this is really good. Uh, plus attack for the better restored plus, and of course she she packs a wallop as well. Anyways, yeah, not not much to say. This is just a really good Erica. I wouldn't really do anything to change her except for changing her special. Everything else is perfect. Good attack, good defense, good res. Hard hard to break through. Her speed's kind of low, but that's how she's supposed to be. Um, I actually think. Um, I actually think Fortress Defense Res is the perfect option on her, just because she has a decent amount of HP and that defense and res is real respectable. Lift to serve to heal yourself back up too is, is a nice touch. Though you could have gone for close counter, you know. Sorry, close defense or distant defense. She's really annoying to deal with, but to not use her unique tome is kind of sad because that's just like auto buffing. Keeping her alive actually makes things so annoying for uh, people to deal with. And straight up, she's been the centerpiece of my Aether Raids defense team. You guys want to see for a moment? Success, 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 success. No losses this season so far. And who's the centerpiece of all of it? This is how I've been running my Erica. 
Steady, steady stance, Warrior Fighter 3, or an Armored Shell Attack. Straight up, this has been destroying everyone's buttholes. Just an armor stall to me. Wow. <laughs> Talk about upgrading your Veronica to the current standard. Yeah, I, I, I get this. This is pretty good. I still can't say this, but whatever. 40 plus 10, 5 flowers, 41 HP, 51 attack, 44 speed, 26 defense, 24 res. Helioskjalf. I can't say it still. Restore plus miracle. Attack speed pu push 4. Wraithful staff 3. Close guard 3. Live to serve 3. That's pretty good. Restore plus with live to serve. So whenever you do heal something, you can help heal yourself back into attack speed push. This is basically making her into like... Um, about equivalent to to Camilla. But Camilla still should still hit a bit harder. Brave Camilla. The new Brave Camilla. But yeah. Brave Camilla can also... Well, while Veronica buffs and debuffs with an attack... Um, Veronica uses gravity, so that's a big difference. Other than that, they're pretty similar once you put attack speed push on them. They hit about as hard, uh, they're just about as annoying. Except Veronica moves a bit better, um, on planes and, and Camilla's more consistent overall in movements. But yeah, this is a fine build. It's not, it's nothing much. I always thought it was weird, like when she first got released and we didn't have push skills, a lot of people would just run like attack speed bond on her and I thought that was weird. It never really worked out. I personally just ran speed plus three, but the most ideal skill for her is push since she can't use fury or something like that. Or so spur. Uh, anyways, this is very standard. DC close call is really what you should be doing on Marita, I would say. Now, it doesn't seem like it's standard because she does not come with this encounter, but that's what most people replace her A skill with. This encounter is just a good choice for her. Even though you have 23 res, close call makes it so that you take it like um, it minimizes the damage you take, right? 23 is not a lot, but if you re reduce their damage by 40%, yeah, you're starting to get away with it, which is what she does. And then flashing blade, if you drop the cooldown of ether to three cooldown, you attack, they attack, and you just ether them and you heal back up. So that's actually really good. And if she, if she outspeeds her opponent enough to get close call, that means they're only hitting her one time. So she, they attack, and then she attacks, and then she she ethers and she heals back up so this is actually a really good combination um, not that not that um big of a difference sorry well uh, it changes marita's role up now she's great offensively and defensively but yeah this is not that committal well it is times pulse is expensive this account is fairly expensive but it's really worthwhile the orders from a coin flip i am so damn triggered what are you triggered about dude I missed the ketchup packet. Oh yeah, I used to flip flip a ketchup packet. But like the ketchup packet, you, you guys know what happened to the ketchup packet, right? You know, one day I went out to go buy something to eat and I came back home and then it was just like, there's not enough ketchup. And I was like, I don't want to go downstairs and grab the ketchup bottle. So I just, uh, I took that ketchup packet and I, I opened it up and put it on my fries. That's why we have no ketchup packets anymore. <laughs> Alright, Dimitri. Minus speed plus attack. Perfect. Death Blow 4. He comes with it. Law attack defense. He comes with it. Hone Cav. I mean, it doesn't really matter who, what you put for uh, his C skill. So, I guess. Hone Cav. It's fine. But yeah. Put him in a, put him in a nice Cav emblem team. Have him, have him go off. Now, if you have no seal, it's really easy. Savage Blow. Why? If you go in and attack and you get hit... Well, congratulations, this, his lance no longer works, unless you have Savage Blow. Savage Blow gets that hit off, and now everyone's damaged, your damage, and you get the next hit off, and then bam, you both up. Spark Tick. Uh, oh, God. Straight up, I'll ask you guys, do you think this is worth it? Would you make an Odin with bonus doubler? Odin? I still remember when Odin got released, everyone was like, Nibs, you don't get it, he's so good now. I'm like, no, you don't get it. He's still trash. And I've stuck to that opinion ever since. I still think he's horrendous. I still don't really understand what the point of this is. So yeah, he's technically a Blade Tome hero, but he's among the worst Blade Tome heroes in the game. Even with all these buffs, he gets to like a mediocre level. So yeah, I don't know. What's the point? I'll, I'll never know. But yeah, so the entire idea is Odin's Grimoire. It's Blade Tome. Grants units to attack equals to bonus on the unit during combat. If a movement skill like blah blah blah, it's attack speed um, link and then defense res link. So you press the swap, he gets plus six to everything. Bonus number makes it plus 12 to everything. And that's the idea. Unfortunately, even with all of that, he's just like kind of just mediocre. And you kind of give up your turn. 
unless you reposition forward or something. And all that just to like use Glimmer and whatnot. The thing is like you add all that damage, this base attack is still 42. Right. So yeah, as nice as nice as it is as nice as it is, even at plus 10 maxed out, it's only 41 speed, 42 attack. It's kind of rough. Um, the speed, you should actually go for attack because you should actually have enough speed in this combination because you're adding 12, that it should be fine. So, yeah, I, I would go for attack. Just, you need to squeeze out every bit, little bit of attack. You can. He also has, yeah, a close counter build, which is decent. But yeah, this, it's, this, is, this is fine. This is fine. It's just, personally, I don't see much value in Odin. I would rather use like Tharja or Nino. So that's how I see it. His stats are just so mediocre. Like, it's... If you... Yes, in this situation, you go this far. You max him out. Yeah, he's actually pretty decent. Because you add 12 more defense, 12 more res. That's 43, 43 with 49 HP. Pretty solid. And especially with a 53 speed. Pretty solid. He doesn't, like, struggle with anything. But still. But still. Even with all that, it's 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 not great. Omni, so... Oh, shit. Oh, uh... Not a fan of that, actually. This is the best Luna I've seen, but I'm not a fan of the build. I think you have something better here. Just by default. 40 HP, 52 attack, plus attack. You should go plus attack on Lynch. Her attack is kind of mediocre. 40 speed, 25 defense, 34 res. Swift Mulager. Fethkin's Flying Flows grants res plus 3. If number of allies within 2 spaces, excluding unit, is greater than number of foes within 2 units, excluding target, grants attack speed plus 5 during combat. So, aka, do you have more allies near you? If you do attack speed plus five aka run her with bond skills but the thing is like if you run swiss barrel you know you have to keep your allies within two spaces and have enough and still use a range attack like it's too awkward to use correctly with uh, swiss barrel so instead most people double down on bonds now I, I know her a skill what her a skill is also this k if foe initiates combat and the number of allies within two spaces is greater than two greater or equal to two grants attack speed defense res plus four during combat you know that's good that's really good but yeah, that's it's it's just awkward using her. It's just seriously a bit awkward. Um, I would honestly have kept this because using Swiss Sparrow and Attack Speed Bond, it's just in theory, like if you can get it to work, it's nice. But a lot of times it doesn't work out like in theory, so that's the rough part. Uh because you went Swiss Sparrow though, I, I would keep it because that's such an expensive skill. And but the thing is with her, if she doesn't trigger her bow her speed and attack is really mediocre she has to get her special abilities to trigger so she's best used defensively a defensive green archer infantry archer it's so wacky okay tanya 40 plus 3 45 hp 49 attack 43 speed 29 defense 32 res cano wax bow i actually think this is the better bow for her her base bow shiny bow is nice um but it's realistically not a lot of good choice it's not a good choice on her because her base attack isn't high enough so Canawax Bow is better. So Canawax Bow, Swiss Barrel 2, Desperation, I like that. This is Fury, gets you in Desperation, Swiss Barrel for the extra kick and attack. Attack Tactic, Brazen Attack Speed. That's good. Oh, fuck. My Languister crashed. My computer has been having so many issues lately. Man, does anybody like wear a tighter shirt than her in this game? Tanya has the tightest shirt of all time. It's... I don't know. I've never found a girl so attractive. Like, she's she's basi basically a guy. She dresses like a guy. She basically has the attitude of a guy. But, like, that shirt, that shirt is way too tight. <laughs> a Drift Camilla. But that's not a shirt. That's still a dress. Posture 3, Mystic Boost 3, Infantry Hexblade, Close Defense. Um, I didn't think I'd see a plus 10 Julius, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Even with steady posture, you're only adding 6 defense, so he gets to 28. But Loptus does help you there, because you drop their attack by 6 when they attack. So that's effectively 34, and this gets you to 40. Huh, that's starting to look decent. Steady posture removes their ability to... Uh, removes their ability to get their specials up. But the thing is, without close counter... It's just about tanking a hit. It doesn't really do anything for you. This is... Oh, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Infantry Hexblade 2. Is, could you, is it because you can't afford it? 
or do you only have two? Oh, you only have two. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, a good sustain. I think it's just to keep Julius alive. This is decent against Archers, but realistically, with only 33 speed, he's not killing much of anything. Yeah, it's just really slow. Uh, close counter on him alone would be kind of iffy. Close counter, close defense would be okay, though. I wouldn't really suggest it, though. Anyways, Julius is, Julius is awkward. Nice to see somebody go that far for him. I wonder what your actual build is, though. I should say posture more for bows and daggers and uh, omni tanking. Yeah, but the thing is, like bows and daggers, they are, they're so quick. This this is actually a problem. Uh, I think all you want to do is survive. In that case, he can do that, but not much else. Ideally, in this game, guys, you don't just survive; you get the kill off. Because if they stay alive, it leads to like potential losses, like wings of mercy, or a chip on you. it chips you down enough that another hero can come in and, and get the kill on you. Sorry, or they, or like they get dance anyways, or it wings of mercy in and snipes you. You know how it goes. This is one of the pages. Close counter advantage on jamp. Ugh. All right, this is like Akaris's favorite archer in the game, and I'm still not like on that train. I don't think I'll ever be on that train. His his rationale is simple. He has a lot of attack, 34 attack base and decent speed, 32 speed base I think. Um, the problem is, like, he's still just neutral IVs, and 34 attack right now is just really mediocre, so I actually don't think much of him at all. I think I think if you're a free player and you're just, you really want an archer, I guess you go for him, but honestly, he's, like, my least recommend, one of my least lesser recommended heroes to get off from your grails. I would say nowadays, like, hell, I, I'd go pretty much just go Gordon. I think Gordon is just much more worthwhile. His own bow, brave bow, um, the damage reduction, like the passive passive reductions. Uh, very free to play friendly, good defense. I, I guess he struggles with doubling, but you know he has brave bow, so he'll double anyways. But yeah, that's what I would go nowadays instead. And instead, I would spend your grails on like Aversa and uh, Itsuki or Astrum. But yeah, those what those are what I would do for what it is. Close counter advantage, defense, smoke attack, defense, brave attack, defense. Yeah, that's basically what I would suggest. You know, he's a fine hero. I don't think I don't think Jam Key is bad. I just feel like I feel like when he first got released, I already thought, you know, I didn't really see the point of him. And then as time went on, I definitely didn't see the point of him, so. But yeah, as, as in terms of the build itself, this is as good as you can make him, I would say. Keep the slaying, I think. That's probably the best use of your resources anyways. If so, if Nim wants to be Zach and I'm Cody. <laughs> no, no, you're not going there. All right, next is Soleil. Slaying Edge plus Ether. Just encounter special Spyro. Home attack four. Heavy Blade three for the fast Ethers. Plus attack, as you should be nowadays. Uh, that's pretty that's pretty fine. Pretty fine. I don't know. Uh, this is for fast Ethers. Dropping it to two cooldowns. So you attack. They attack. Nothing happens. And I would change your weapon then. Because if you drop it to two cooldown, what's the point? So you attack, they attack. That their attack now goes wasted. So you might as well change your weapon. Because if you're gonna use special spiral and drop it to three cooldown with heavy blade, it's it works out. The only way only reason I would say, say to go special spiral is if you drop heavy blade. So my suggestion is to use a different weapon or use a different seal. But you should not uh, be wasting the hit. It does help when they have guard or something, yes, but usually that's not a problem. Anger plus this encounter guard three attack smoke out shield uh, I I really don't like doing this encounter on flyers you guys let me know the only only hero only flyer I like this encounter on or any kind of counter on is uh is Altina because she doesn't count as a flyer because if you have to run out shield you're actually doing yourself a huge service there's not much point in running like um, a defensive flyer Unless they're completely built for it, aka like Subaki. But even then, I obviously don't suggest making a Subaki. But yeah, um, you guys let me know. But personally, it's just because you have to always worry about archers, and there are so many archers in the game, especially later on. And then if you worry about the archer, you gotta put out shield, and that takes away from like distant defense, close defense, or any other um, seals. 
Like, a really good seal on her would be, uh... What, what is it? Flyers can use stances. Which stance is it? Steady posture. Sorry, they can use postures and, st and stances. They just can't use, like, steady breaths. Um, but yeah, she would really need that because that extra 4 speed can allow her to double really easily. But you kind of sacrifice it. You sacrifice in order to uh, deal with archers, so it's it's a bit rough. Um, but yeah, aside from that, you know, this is pretty good. It's just the bit of extra defense, bit of extra speed could go a long way. You might not even double back naturally, so. Um, good Thea. I think it's about as, as much as you could do, but I would double down on just making her up good up close. 